back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take a midweek break to cover all the fascinating things we found since, well, last week. So, um, how about we just get right into it, because this week, old Skype, remember how it died last week? Microsoft has brought it back, and XFC is getting made over. A makeover, if you will. Much to my disappointment. Basically, all of the Ryzen details have leaked. Yes, including pricing, and Humble pushes a big old bundle. An awesome value proposition if you don't already have all the games. Uh, the elementary OS team has set up a new crowdfunding campaign for a brand new app center with pay what you want features. And the city of Munich has switched, uh, have, have switched everything to Linux and LibreOffice, but it seems they like wasting time and money because they are switching everything back to Windows. Mm, that's just a little bit of the taste of what we're about to get into, starting with G. I want to call it the GDP, but no, it's GPD. <laughs> we talked about it before. The Pocket 7-inch laptop, the crowdfunding campaign, starts February 15th. Um, this is that little 7-inch, 1.1-pound, 128-gig Windows 10 or Ubuntu 16.04. Totally not a Sony Vio, guys. No, no, no. Uh, little laptop-y <laughs> thing. And they're saying, hey, man, for the low, low price of $399, you're talking with a quad-core Atom processor. Ooh, all right, four gigs of RAM, not too bad. USB 3, micro HDMI, headphone jack, 7,000 milliamp battery, and uh, 1920 by 1200 IPS display. Uh, okay. Um, now, we did find that one image of uh, it looking like it wasn't 3D rendered, so yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a thing. and That's going to be something to look forward to, they're saying. Uh, the suggested retail price is going to be closer to 600 Dollars? I don't know. Is this uh, something you're excited about, Strider? I mean, I would if it didn't cost that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a quad core Atom, so I don't know for some for an Atom, I would pay two hundred bucks at at most, probably less. Yeah, no, this but is six, the the five ninety nine MSRP that they're claiming. Although, if you back their Indiegogo campaign, please don't do that. You can get it for three ninety nine, uh, but yeah, no, six hundred bucks for this. That's way too expensive, and that's probably the reason why those old Vio Xs never really sold all that much to start with. I, I don't know. I'm definitely looking at yeah, the but something like this. I think Strider made a good point. This is something like the what was it called the Pandora. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you're doing something in low volumes, you, it's going to cost a quite a bit of money. Because in reality, it's kind of like a four gig version of what I'm holding in my hands right now for the audio <laughs> listeners, which is a quad core Bay Trail x86 tablet um, that cost me 50 wet, stinky American cash. Yeah. So 50. That's less than a pen. No. <sighs> yeah. I mean, that's that's too bad because it seems like a neat device. Mm -hmm. But if only they didn't go through crowdfunding and they just found a producer and mass produced this device, they would be able to sell it like for 150 or something like this. Yeah, well, it'll be definitely a thing. I wish them the best of luck, though, and I'm sure yeah. there, there'll be enough enthusiasts to hopefully get it made. And, you know, maybe if you pick up one of those, you could use our next story to install some packages. Yes, exactly. So this is coming from uh, Elementary OS, and they have this new project of creating uh, a kind of an app store uh, for for their OS, but with the difference that it lets people uh, pay for the software. And, and, you know, it's a free price. You pay what you want. And there's already a couple apps uh, that will be Oh, using no, it. we're not in their podcast. Shame, <laughs> shame, ring, ring, shame. ring, ring. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that's that's very cool. They they have made a lot of uh, progress on the the crowdfunding. They're almost there. Like they 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 have they're at uh, seventy two percent of the goal. So that's cool. If they reach their goal, they will uh, meet up like for a week and do a sprint on the project. So it gets like a very quick progress. Uh, this this is something that is much needed in the Linux world. I mean, being able to pay for programs like for for the ones that don't have a Patreon or 
or a, a PayPal address, something like this. This is very neat. Um, this and, is and great it's done in by two ways. Elementary. So this is great in two ways because it makes it centralizes everything. It lets people pay directly from the app store that they're downloading. It's like, oh, okay, I downloaded this. It works really well. I'm gonna pay them a little bit of money. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome, and it saves people from having to go and find their Patreons, find their project pages, find everything so they could donate money there. That's good. And it also makes Elementary some money on the side. So, hey, that's good. Uh, I like yeah, it. Um, I, is this only going to be for Elementary OS? Well, I hope not. I mean, it, it is going to be for Elementary OS at first, but I hope this like spreads out in other Linux distros because this is needed pretty much everywhere. So, I mean, you know what? I would I would consider something like this for Lutris, uh, even. Well, I mean, as a developer, that's what I was asking because I, it, you you could pay for it, but you would still have an um, option to you know go to like GitHub and download the source. Yeah, and even you can even get the the software for free from the App Store. You don't have to pay. I mean, it's like if you've been to the Elementary OS website, you can uh, down uh, get give money to the the team and then download the ISO or just download the, the OS. Okay. You don't have to pay anything. Right on. So we got to talk about this because for oh some reason, all, yes. almost all the AMD, you, um, I said that backwards, yeah. Linux users <laughs> we've run across, including when we first started the show without even knowing each other, Jordan, myself and Pedro all running AMD, but this is Ryzen, baby. We got some leaks yep. and details and graphs and things. Yay. Indeed. So WCCF Tech, they've been busy this week because they leaked not just the uh, the prices. That's the very first uh, article we'll, you'll have in the notes. Uh, you can get uh, the hottest one is set to MSRP at four ninety nine, and it's the Ryzen 7 1800X, which has eight cores, 16 threads with a 3.6 base clock and a four gigahertz turbo. Uh, and uh, you can overclock it all you want. Uh, then you, uh, at the low end, you get the AMD Ryzen 3 1100, which comes at a base price of 130 bucks with a 3.2 base clock and a 3.5 gigahertz turbo. So there are some, there is some leeway in terms of price as to what you can afford. Now I can hear you asking already. But what about the performance? Well, that's the second article. The second article, they found a they found a ton of different leaks that uh, led them to set up a few graphs that you can browse, uh, and they give uh, they compare the 1700. That's the production unit, so it doesn't have the turbo core enabled. It's just a base clock, and you can get. I mean, for most of the leak tests, keeping in mind that these aren't exactly game benchmarks, the 1700 DEX uh, is outperforming the 6900K and the 5960X. Now, those are two $1,000 processors. In the single-threaded tests, which is the ones that matter because, you know, games, uh, the i7-7800K from Intel actually mops the floor with just about everything else, seeing as it is a 4.2 gigahertz... Uh, processor with turbo mode enabled but and i did some maths on the side if we are talking one-to-one -one scaling in clock speeds uh which is never the case let's be honest uh the 1700x would actually be slightly faster at 4.2 gigahertz than the 7700k in the single threaded tasks you know like games but uh guess what it all comes down to it and if you have a look at all the graphs you'll know that they are still falling short in some of the tests. Now, we'll have to see how that pans out, and this isn't exactly destroying Intel's performance, but if the final uh, round of benchmarks from all the rest of the outlets and the game benchmarks uh, confirm this, this is going to force Team Blue to revise their pricing. But they're still... Yeah, go on, go on. No, no, go on. Yeah. You, 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 you just, you just got to throw, you got to throw, throw a little bit of reality in at the end of that. Doesn't yeah, you? I do because uh, AMD said that they these processors were going to be out early March, and there's still a lot of time between now and early March for them to screw things up. So keep that in mind. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for more independent benchmarks uh, when it is actually released after that. I mean, th those numbers, I mean, great, it's cool we have those, but uh, I would like to see some things specific specifically for Linux. And not not only like video encoding and 3D rendering, but games because games that was a big problem with uh, AMD CPUs. It's they were they would run great on Intel and very poorly on AMD. So I'm waiting to see those benchmarks, uh, possibly from um, for Arnix or some YouTube uh, YouTube streamers. They will probably deliver some some of those. Uh, but but yeah, I mean I, I'm pretty happy that. I won't have to change my CPU for the next couple of years because I'm pretty sure the next one I'll you get. You have Broadwell, well, you're fine. I don't know. Much I mean, I, I would definitely write into the ground because uh, Jordan on our Saturday show bought the new hot sauce Skylake quad core eight thread part, which cost a bazillion Canadian dollars. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the Ryzen 5 1500 um, six core 12 thread part that's kind of falling in price performance. Um, I know. Why? Why? Pedro, I mean, why don't you go? To make you angry, it? Strider, I have spent <laughs> weeks calculating on yeah. what processor would irritate you the most if I bought it, yes, and that's yes, the it one does. I settled it's, on. Uh, there's a new CPU coming out, and you're going for the crippled one? <laughs> you're going I mean, for the mid-range one, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. mid-range. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to buy an i5. Keep well, going. Why? Yeah, it still has six cores and 12 threads. And W, I mean, take all of this with yeah, a grain but, of salt because this is WCCF one. tech we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But their leaks have been pretty much on the mark for the past two years. Every single leak they've made has basically resulted in truth shortly after the product was released. So in a way, I'm optimistic. But in another way... This is still AMD we're talking. Well, about. you got to definitely look at um, when we see real world. Because what I'm worried about, you know, is MLT and GHB encoding speed, which yeah. I, I'm almost positive. You know, if we're talking, you know, just handbrake scores. That's basically an FFmpeg encoding. What I'm looking at, and I, I'm pretty sure the six core, twelve thread part will handily trounce my octo core eighty one fifty. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? So be even better. The eight core, sixteen thread. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Humble has, well, they've gone not so uh, humble on the bundle, as it were. They're offering. They've lost uh, their dang mind. $30. Yeah, they're offering like 40 games, uh, 30 of which currently are available for Linux. And they're saying pay us a flat fee of 30 bucks and everything goes to charity. That's Ooh, insane. I'm noticing a few things That's right amazing. here. We, we see Subnautica, which. They're they're out of keys. They're out of keys for Super Meat Boy already. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The they've sold so much, in fact, that the base price is thirty bucks, and they're currently up to four million a hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars at the time of recording. I'm yeah. Seeing some Neil Gaiman in here, so we got some books, some graphical novel stuff. Indeed, too. there are right. a couple of books in there too. Five or six of them. Uh, if you're watching this by the time it's published, chances are there are already going to be more games and or books available because they say they're adding more in two hours from right now. So keep this that in mind. Yeah. Uh, I, for one, think this is an awesome, awesome uh, bundle. But the value proposition for me, I already own 22 of those 30 Linux games currently available. So I'm kind of here and there. And finding it very yeah. hard to drop 28 bucks. But, to but you have to, to keep in mind that you're a gaming journalist. So, yes, you will <laughs> own more games than the average person. Eh. Keep in mind that, that most <laughs> Journalist is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> journalist. You, you yeah, could not have cut the course. two of us more deeply, Strider. <laughs> I mean, how dare you accuse us of having journalism stuff <laughs> in it. But I, I'm definitely like Pedro. I, listen, this is <laughs> wickedly priced for this if you don't already have the games. And... Here's yeah. the thing, I know a lot of people already have a lot of the games, but mm, 30 bucks? Uh, I mean, think of it as a donation for a very good, very good cause, uh, cause that does need it very badly right now. So, I mean, if you're not doing it for the games, uh, you can do it for just a donation. And you get, like, keys and bonus. And you yeah. can go give those away if you want. Yeah, you can always give the extra ones you get to your friends and uh, 
Sure. Favorite online people? No, I mean, you can definitely do it. We need to give away, like, just in my personal humble account with Steam Keys, I have eight pages of unredeemed stuff. So look forward yep. to some <laughs> future giveaways. But you can always play your games on the best desktop ever created. That's XFC. Oh, no, it's XFC. <laughs> It's beautiful. Uh, well, they're trying to make it beautiful uh, because uh, they're making with the pretties. They're doing some GTK3 stuff, um, some new things for the task manager. They got notified D's, got some new wicked stuff in it. Thunar, mm, everyone's favorite file manager. I don't even know what a gray bird is, to be honest with you. Apparently, it's, it's two buttons. It's a theme. <laughs> and, uh, gray bird is a theme. <laughs> all right. All right. That's fine. I won't use that theme. It's not ugly enough. Uh, Strider, why, why are they trying to make my beautifully fugly xfce desktop the pretties because usually people like pretty desktops i know i do but yeah i mean i i'm pretty sure you know things are too about uh, making your desktop ugly but yeah yes so like, unlike, unlike like you nice I mean, i've things. never sat down on a perfectly functional desktop environment and went no it's just not fabulous enough for me i can't use it <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you, can on, make, you can make XFC look very nice. I mean, I do have a laptop with XFC on it, and it does look great. I mean, it's not my favorite uh, desktop, but I can make it look nice. You know, I put a nice theme, like I put Ar Arc Dark or uh, uh, New Mix icons, and yeah, it looks all right. Okay. I mean, it's like every step they take, it looks more QT-ish. I'm like, no. No, it's actually uh, GTK. And the one you're looking at is actually the old one. That's GTK 2. Uh, the new, uh, that's like the improved new thing that is coming with the next uh, few versions of the XFC software suite. Uh, they will be porting most of everything they can to GTK3. As you can see there, uh, now, that you, picture. You know this, the task manager I kind of like because now it's integrated all in one tab? Yep. As opposed to... Yeah. Okay. And yeah, you that, that get the uh, title sense. bar with the, it, the... Those title bars don't need to be that big. That's my biggest gripe with GTK3, especially if you're trying to use it in a laptop with a shoddy 1366 by 768 screen. Those title bars, they need to be smaller. Just saying. But they yeah, but if upgraded you a bunch, a bunch of, of widgets in it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, so. yeah, it, rem it reminds me a little bit of elementary OS. Uh, doesn't look also as Gators, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look as nice, but it's getting there. Very cool. Okay. Remember last week um, when uh, Microsoft did a, they, they kind of did a market test. They're like, hey, let, let's see if we can kill the old working Skype on Linux and hopefully a lot of no, people no, no, will get no. upset. Did you remember they didn't talk about Linux? Well, they didn't not talk about it. It was like, mm, mm. They didn't talk about Linux, but they sent Linux users that very same email. Right, I know that, I got that, it. That, that's exactly what happened because yeah. they totes didn't mean to send out that email to Linux users saying, hey, Linux users, we're killing the old functional version of Skype. And they were like, mm, maybe we won't get any backlash from that. They got a lot of backlash from it. So they pulled out the backtrack drive and spooled it up and said okay um maybe we won't um, completely strand linux users and um yeah I, I guess me and pedro were talking about it before the show is what they really didn't want to tell the mac and windows users is the servers the functional skype you know because even mac and windows users are completely raging on mm -hmm. the latest versions of skype and they're trying to stick with the older versions especially podcasters but yeah. they, they didn't want the mac and windows users to know that's like yeah, those servers are still going to be around. You just can't use them, bro. Yeah, chances are we're going to make you pay for, say, a premium version of Skype that you will get to, say, I don't know, maybe use some peer-to-peer -peer functionality, which you've already been using for the past decade. Yeah, we're going to make you pay for that. <laughs> so what, what I think is going to happen is that old Skype is going to stop working one day but not because of Microsoft, but because it's so old and so outdated that future Linux distros just won't run it. Well, I mean, the only thing it really needs are, is Qt4 and libssl 1.0.0. Exactly, exactly. And Qt4 is deprecated. Now we're on Qt5. Yeah. And Qt4 I, is going I mean, to get... You can easily package Qt4... So it won't um, 
conflict with QT5. It's doable. Yeah, I've seen it done before. Or back. say you could include it. I, I just in... want. I, I didn't have it set up, but I should have a picture of Jeff Goldblum just popping up right now. And, you know, <laughs> Skype will find a way. I mean, if it came down to it, yeah. you could run it in a VM. But hopefully, hope beyond hopes, we will have a legitimate, viable replacement to Skype completely by the time that is ever, ever. Mm -hmm. A legitimate problem so good news on that and plus we like old skype because microsoft didn't develop it right yep. um <laughs> up next um for no apparent reason yeah so if you remember a few years ago i think um munich the city of munich it was a while back because i remember reading it on slashdot and it's been a long time since i've read slashdot <laughs> yeah um they, they switch everything to linux and LibreOffice. And now they've changed administrations and people in charge. So they're switching everything back to Windows and Microsoft Office. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they didn't give a lot of reasons to do that. They said they had issues with uh, running Linux. Uh, they did go through the trouble of making their own uh, Linux distro, which I think wasn't the best idea because they have to maintain it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's too bad because they could like hire a few people and keep this up to date, but no, I mean, they're, they're just don't want Linux. I mean, I mean how can you blame them? Microsoft has definitely been pounding on them and offering them all the bite sized Snickers they could eat. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Microsoft has banned this, yes. Yeah, and the biggest issue is with the change of administration, most of the support also disappeared. And the new mayor, uh, he actually called himself, or he, he keeps being described as a self-proclaimed Microsoft fan. And he was the one who ordered a uh, Microsoft-affiliated consulting company uh, can't remember their name now, but it's it's in the article if you look for it. And those people said that Munich should switch back to Windows. Why? Because, well, it's money. It's money. It's collusion, basically. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe they should switch to one of Microsoft's Linux distributions. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just slap him in the face. It's Boom like, shakalaka. <laughs> okay, so flat packs are totally working, right? Yeah, well, they are getting yeah. close to working. And one of the things that was missing is also the very same reason that the Steam runtime was always unreliable. Uh, you could uh, you could statically link most libraries, but there was always one that you could never do, and that was libgl. Yes, the library that provides the OpenGL calls between the driver and the application. Now, the um, you could already include Mesa in the Flatpak runtime, as it were. So if you were using the open source drivers with an Intel or an AMD system, that's fine. You could already get 3D acceleration and all the good stuff that Mesa does. You, what you couldn't do was say if you had an NVIDIA video card and you weren't running Solus because Solus actually did something similar to this beforehand. Now they, they've gone, oh, okay, that's a neat idea. So we're going to do that too. So now you can use the out of tree OpenGL drivers. That's the NVIDIA proprietary driver and the AMD GPU proprietary module. Uh, you can use both of those in sandboxed uh, flat pack applications. That's awesome. Um, there was one issue that kind of cropped up when I was reading this, which was, okay, so uh, if you're allowing the, uh, the flat pack to access the system, at least for the video drivers, you're already breaking the sandbox a little bit. Uh, so even if it holds up everywhere else, any malicious exploits coming from a compromised flat pack could use the graphics drivers, proprietary graphics drivers, which you can't look at the source code, you can't really see what's going on with them can use those as a means of escaping the sandbox. So that could be an issue. No, that's why you should only uh, use open source AMD video cards, right? <laughs> yeah. Has it ever been an issue? Has ever one used that? Uh, Flat packs are fixing things. We people? just don't know I mean, problems. Why uh, don't you believe, uh, you heathen? That's the problem. I and mean, I have 
uh, I, I'm not against sandboxing apps. Or I just got to pause for like one this. second because I have never seen somebody because Strider's like, flat packs are great until he tried to mess with flat packs and he's like, flat packs those are rubbish. Those were snaps. Those no, were no, no, no. Those, those are snaps. Well, I've mostly messed around with uh, snap packages. Uh, flat packs, they're, they work pretty much okay yeah. now. I call them snappy, I've never had a lot of images packs, with them. man. It's all the same. But <laughs> what I don't want is uh, losing features or having my my applications look ugly because they will not use the theme I'm using. I mean, I can live without uh, sandboxing. I've done so for the past 25 years. So why should yeah, I Yeah, but it's it an now? extra measure of security and you haven't lived without sandboxing for that long. Chances are if you've been running, oh, I don't know, Google Chrome for the past three years, you've had a pretty neat sandbox going. Yeah, for the, the, the tabs in Chrome, yeah. I, yeah. Sure. Mm. But other than that, for the regular apps, yeah. I mean, and okay. I, I haven't been attacked or anything, so. Before we yeah. get out That's of here, let's shit. talk about something that uh, we would actually like your feedback if you find, if you can tell us an exact reason for this. This yes. is TakeOver.sh. Wipe and reinstall a running Linux system via SSH without rebooting, period. You know you want to period why yes i do <laughs> air quotes no this is stuff. definitely one of those in the world of that's neat but Dude, why? anything that has four warnings on all caps <laughs> that might as well just say vin wants to install this or will be installing this <laughs> later on um it, i i really with pedro on this like i really cannot come up with a use case for this but it, it's neat Right? I mean, yeah, sure, it is very, very neat. And uh, basically what this lets you do is you'll be able to reinstall or install a completely different distro, uh, just not needing to reboot. Uh, you'll keep the exact same kernel you're already running. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, unmount the original root file system, do anything yeah. you want, all without rebooting. So, Strider, it does... Is... <laughs> That's uh, that seems cool. I mean, I can see being uh, it could be useful in some cases. Yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, uh, it's definitely up there with like using your uh, video cards for um, RAM for system memory. You can do it, but yeah, probably not a great idea. This could be fun. Um, I, well, I think we've already got some people like you. You want to try it on my box? It's like probably not. <laughs> it's probably a bad idea, Pedro. Let's thank some beautiful people and talk about some pie. Yes, let's thank one very beautiful person who actually upped his donation, Mr. Arthurin. Thank you very, very much. He is currently one of our uh, Chicago kicks ass Patreons. And you can, if you like, you know, I'd like a shout out on the show. I'd like you guys to say my name because, hey, I'm giving you money. And that's fair. You can go to linuxgamecast.com slash support or just hit the support button. <clears throat> Let's try that again. Hit the support button on the nav bar. Uh, you'll be greeted with some Amazon affiliate links and some PayPal donato buttons. But if you could, we'd really appreciate it if you could screech on over to the Patreons. Like, I don't know, uh, throw us a quarter. Throw a quarter at our heads every single week whenever uh, one episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly comes out. Uh, and you'll be giving us about a dollar a month, and that gets you access to the pre pre chosen, which is basically Linux Gamecast Weekly, unfiltered and no show notes. It's just whatever we come up with, literally. If you've ever wanted to listen to us talk about shaving for 15 minutes, I'm telling you, <laughs> man, this is the show for you. But the Patreons, and we want to thank every single one of you. I know Joe is in there, Trugs is in there, is everyone in chat room watching live along with a billion others that are screaming at me, like, oh, man, I was like, I can't read that much. It hurts my simple brain. But it, it's not just a thing. It's not a scheme. You're keeping us loud, live, independent, helping us fight this beautiful fight against everyone who's like, Linux is too hard. And we're like, no, it's not. Come on. Come on over to our side. It's going to be beautiful. We got some rewards up there, stuff that you get back. You know, we do value for value. We got some extra bonus footage, as Pedro was saying, along with some extra shows that we do. And you also get early access to our live shows. So, and nothing's ever going to be behind a paywall, but, you know, sometimes you'll be getting them, you know, sometimes three to five days earlier. Thanks again for everyone um, who, I mean, lets us do this and we, we don't like, we don't have to read commercials every 10 minutes and that's awesome. Okay. 
Nom, nom, nom. Ooh, hi. <laughs> yes. Okay, hi. so the very first story in our slice of pie this week uh, comes from Jarrett at the Linux forum. And he, well, he created a whole new distro aimed at the Raspberry Pi. He called it Recall Box OS. Uh, you can download it. Uh, he's got the links for everything. And he's actually got links to stuff he probably shouldn't have, namely ROMs and BIOSes for certain consoles. Just saying. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Recall Box OS, and it's running on top of, uh, what is this, Emulation Station? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is Emulation uh, Station. And he managed to get it working, and the moment you plug in a new um, controller to the Raspberry Pi, it will detect it and it lets you configure it right off the box, say if it's one of those non-standard controllers and you may need to do some configuration, especially under Linux. It'll let you do that right off the bat, so that's awesome. And it, hey, if it's one less step between people getting a Raspberry Pi and setting it up as a homebrewed arcade system. Eh, that's awesome. I'm just jelly. Where were these things when we were like eight or nine? You know, we, 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 I was like, <laughs> I got three video games and I felt grateful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now now you could have like 30,000 right. video games on one little small device. Uh, yeah, but this is exactly what I was looking for. And it comes with... Uh, Lib Retro Emulation and Kodi. So those two, uh, I would wanted something, I could use those two without rebooting into another system. So this is, I'm going to try it out. This is very, very great. But the, the only complaint, well, I mean, it's a very small complaint, is that they're, they're using Emulation Station instead of RetroArch because mm -hmm. RetroArch has been, has been making some amazing progress in the past few months so i mean i would like i would like it if it was rhetoric but I, i'll do with emission to station okay and always remember you can find all this nonsense in our show notes this is definitely one of those get why it's hot and that's gonna be a thing hey man do we, we gotta what, what's this about this one so this is the the snap story of the week except no it's not about snaps it's about the snap dragon eight Tw uh, 20. So I, I can, uh, we could say this is the most powerful uh, mini computer. It's not yet on the market, but it will soon hit the market. It's based on, yeah, this, this Snapdragon uh, chipsets, the, the, the latest one. <laughs> and it's got a quad core CPU, it supports um, 4K video decoding. It's got uh, three gigabytes of uh, DDR4 RAM, uh, gigabit Ethernet, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and even a GPS. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty much a, a little awesome device. They yes. haven't got, uh, given any pricing on this, but I'm pretty sure it will be a bit more expensive than a Pi. Or if you remember, we, we reviewed the Asus Tinkerboard and uh, I'm pretty sure this one will be a bit more expensive. Oh, no, this is going to make the Asus Tinkerboard look cheap by comparison, because this, yeah. this is a Snapdragon 820 we're talking about. Uh, this is the kind of SOC you see in uh, high-end cell phones and high-end tablets. This is exactly the kind of stuff you want if you want to run... 4k video decoding uh you want to have a teeny tiny box in the back of your tv just being powered off of the usb and outputting to the tv and doing everything you want from games you could actually probably play wii games uh, there is a version of dolphin for arm isn't it well so, I mean, you're gonna have to look at that because i mean sure just gonna point i mean unfortunately this does not currently have linux on it which means we got to wait 20, possibly 24 seconds before that actually happens. <laughs> yeah, Linux support is not official. It's just uh, Android. Android is the official one, but people are already saying you could probably run Linux on it. You, you definitely want to put Linux on that because, I mean, with that much power? I mean, would you yeah. get Cody up and running? <laughs> Maybe, you know, um, that OpenPlex alternative? And Well, oh, yes. Give me, give me that. Yeah. Give me that and a piece of duct tape and psh, on the back of the TV uh -huh. and we're good to go, mm -hmm. right? Depends on how much it costs. Uh, um, basically, I, I, I could probably get about one fifty, two hundred on that without crying uh, too yeah, much. Yeah, it's going to be around two hundred. 
Yeah, that's a bit too much. Hmm. We'll, we'll see. But um, if you think that's too much, you should uh, write us back and let us know. Indeed, because it's time we got to the feedback. You can let us know. Again, go on over to linuxgamecast.com. Uh, you hit the contact button. You fill out the form. Just make sure to pick LWDW from the little box. It's easy enough. And hey, you want to shot in our direction? Chances are you probably do because we just spent the last 30 something minutes shouting in yours. So this week, we did have some shouts, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Mr. Joe Angel said, my weekend starts on Tuesday. Jelly. So LWDW is my Saturday show and LGC Weekly is my midweek show. Is it wrong for me to stay on Ubuntu 14.04? My 2011 laptop has a legacy AMD card. Heh, <laughs> been there. And FGLRX will not run on anything newer than 14.04. Uh, I'm not sure uh, that upgrading to 16.04 is worth it since I can only use the open source driver. And before you tell me, just update my hardware. I'm saving up for it and can't wait to run modern games with heavy graphics. Eh, I mean, I used a calculator for a long, long time, from 2009 to 2014. Uh, it was a blessing when I only had, say, about a 20 20- percent performance decrease from going from FGLRX to the open source Mesa drivers. So yeah, no, as far as I'm concerned, upgrade to 16.04 all you want. Just make sure you use um, uh, Paulo Miguel Diaz Padaka Zero. He created a stable Mesa PPA. So you don't get the gits, you don't get any weird stuff that might come with the development versions. It's always a stable version and it's more up to date to what's in the repos in Ubuntu because let's face it, it's Ubuntu. <laughs> mm-hmm. so first of all if it works there's nothing wrong about keeping a system that works so I mean, if you're happy just leave it the way it is but uh, I still wonder what would be the difference between the old school uh, FGL RX hasn't been updated in a couple of years now and the Mesa 17 that was released last week uh, and made like major progress so no this you know uh, stable could... was released yesterday yeah yesterday <laughs> so you know what just find out for yourself grab a usb drive install 1604 on it and do some benchmarks yeah i mean if find i'm being perfectly yourself. honest 1404 is just fine definitely one thing if you want to stick with 1404 update your kernel just do a Google for that, and it'll show you how to get the latest and greatest kernel. I would still be on 1404 if we didn't have to do the game reviews, because there was really <laughs> nothing wrong with it. But it finally got to the point where a lot of developers were targeting 1604. Harold! So, <clears throat> yeah, we definitely had to take care of that. But let's see. Coming up next, what do we have here? Jason. Jason, he writes uh, rehashing. And uh, your recent Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, um, Pedro wondered out loud about why so much crap is releasing in March. I was wondering that, too. I mean, why is this happening? Is it some overall business strategy for these companies, question mark? Are most of the fiscal years for these companies starting in February? Do they need to sacrifice a goat? Why, yes, they do to the guy. Absolutely. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> no, no. Uh, the uh, the bit about the fiscal year starting in late February, early March makes a lot of sense. I completely forgot about that. But yeah, no, that, I guess that explains that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Thoughts, hints, allegations? Um, don't, don't sacrifice goats. I mean... Goats are, are stronger than you, so don't mess with them. That's well goats nice. are awesome. Oh. They'll eat anything. Listen, man, if you want to sacrifice yeah. goats, you can do it on Linux with a goat simulator. No one gets harmed <laughs> in the process of that. Sometimes bad means yes. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's because of the fiscal year and then it just gets dumped. Plus, you have the, you know, January when no one wants to release S and all. Yeah, that's January. just the old stuff that goes right. on sale. You know, that's where you put the movies that you don't want us to see, you know, if you're Hollywood. <laughs> um, and, and it's kind of really like that with uh, software titles, too. But um, unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, we've had such a good time. But we'll be back next week. You can always find us live somewhere around 3 p.m. Eastern time. Type that into the Googs, math it out, and everything should work. But I've been um, Vin Stone. You can find me on the Twitter thing, um, at Vinstone or plus Vinstone on G+. I am Peter Matos. You can find me on Twitter at an accounted for or on Google Plus at plus Peter Matos. 
And I'm Matthew Commando. You can find me on Twitter at Strikor or uh, on uh, Google Plus, Matthew Commando. Mm -hmm. All right. Beautiful, beautiful party people. We'll be back next week. And if you like the gaming stuff and you need all this, why, well, yes, 9.30 p.m. Pedro and I will return with our tame Canadian podcaster, Master Sveng, for some debauchery. But you really want to prepare <laughs> yourself because we're different people. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot more booze involved. Bye. <laughs>